Ah, dinky do, it's me, Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live. The nation's favourite, the big one, the one everyone is talking about and the one everyone is listening to. Scotty McClue, just for you, dinky do, for one hour this Sunday evening. In fact, every Sunday evening, God willing, weather permitting, at 2200 hours Greenwich Mean Time sharp. 10 o'clock sharp for you, or 5 o'clock if you're watching in the United States. Welcome, 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 I say, to the country's top phone-in programme on the country's top radio station. Richard Mackay's watching, Mick McFarlane's watching, Julianne Scott's watching, Stuart Walker's watching, Lynn Finlayson's watching, George Mullins watching, Mick McFarlane says, good evening, Scotty. Julianne Scott says, hi, Scotty. Laurie L.D. Dev says, good evening, Scotty, from Sonny Stornovy. I would be very surprised if Stornoway is sunny tonight, but who knows? Scotty, are you live, says Jarvis Butler. Of course, don't be so silly. And um, Ron Stewart, hi, Scotty. Happy Sunday. Colin Edwards is watching. Alex Duff says, good evening. Numpty Heat, he's obviously talking to Numpty Heat, who phones us two minutes late. Again, Scotty, nonsense. Bang on time. Sandra Bonner, hello, Scotty. Good evening, Scotty, from all here in Scotland's largest village of Cambus Lang. Gaz Rowley Jones is watching. Evening, Mr. McClue. Paul Mungle's watching. Angie Thompson's watching. And Kirsten is watching. Good evening, Scotty. I'll be Skyping you shortly, says Francis King. Good for him. Mike Henfield is watching. One of the finest managing editors in the country. Hello, Scotty, says Dino the Dog. Neil James Mills is watching. Brian J. Hemmings. David Hemsley's watching. All right, Scotty. I'm on the 900 for Edinburgh, 9 o'clock I think that is, from Edinburgh to Glasgow. Sir Alba, says Luke Jones. And uh, Brian J. Hemmings, Colin Edwards, Keith, Glasgow, good evening to you, Mr. Dinky Doo. Turn the Skype off, it's full of boring bangers, says George Mullen. Well, you would know about that, George. Mention, please, Gary, Greg and Callum Stewart in Glen Boyg says Gary Stewart. Dinky-doo to everybody in Glen Boyg. This is Scotty McClue live with you Sunday night. Nothing gets past me. Sunday the 22nd of January 2017. Big, big things are happening for Scotty McClue. I can't tell you too much, but it's wonderful stuff. Hello again, Scotty. From Bonnie Paisley. Dinky-doo, says Martin Park. Laura Sojourner. Hi, on two kisses. Seems you got a couple of Welshies in tonight. Says Julianne Scott, well, I'm very glad to hear that some of the Welsh people are picking up Scotty McClue. I think that's excellent, I do. And uh, good evening, everyone. Hope you're well, says Francis King. Hi, Scotty, says John Downey. <clears throat> now then, Angie Thompson says, as me, Scotty, what happened to big Bella Free Bothwell? Says Neil James Mills. As far as I know, Bella is to the fore and out there, Neil James. John Hewson is watching. One of our finest businessmen, a top radio man, John Hewson. When it comes to marketing and advertising sales, John Hewson, your man. Uh, Jim Clark's watching Dinky Doo, Jim. The new job must be given the go-ahead, says George Mullen. In all in good time, George, don't try and draw me. Uh, there we are, unless you're a cartoonist. Julianne Scott, be there now in a minute, lol, she says. Douglas William Bryce is watching. Oh, the boyos. Said Neil James. Hi, Julianne, says Francis King. Brian J. Hemmings, what's on the agenda tonight, Scotty? Can we start with Glasgow Council? No, George, we will not be visiting Glasgow Council on my programme because this is not the place to do it. We're not going to knock things. It's not a knocking shop. James Kittle's watching. Hello, Scotty, says Gordon Sterling. My catheter issues have now been resolved, but I have terrible... Oh, no, no, we're not into that. What's in the agenda, Scotty, says Brian? Well, let me tell you. Two things in the agenda, just to start us, but anything you want to discuss, you're very welcome to do so. We only want mature people on Skype, no idiots, no half-wits, otherwise you'll just get cut off. Um, if you say something inappropriate, you will, of course, then be banned. And it's a lifetime ban, so look out for that. Scotty, what happened to your buddy, wee fat Bob? Uh, he was a loving kind of man, as he's still kicking about. I have not got a clue until you mentioned his name tonight 
I had forgotten about him. So there we are. Now, uh, but you've reminded me. Thank you for that. Uh, now, we'll have share out, share points throughout the program when everybody shares the video. But you've all got good Scotch fingers on you. So get typing and say to everyone who's your Facebook friend, are you watching Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live right now, Dinky Doo, just for you? Now, we're talking about um, smoking. Smoking is banned in public places, but people smoke outside of the pub, usually at the door. Dinky Doo says Mark Jones. We Sandy from Glasgow. Jings, the male seagulls are back in town, says Sandra Johnson. Now, um, so I think that outside the pub is a public place. Smoking should be banned outside. Hey, says Mark Jones. Scotty, what's wrong? You're all wrapped up as the heating off. Heating's off now, Daniel. This is the spring. Um, don't the rest of you put it off, especially if you're elderly. Uh, we've done that already, Scotty, says Mick. Is that put your heating off or shared the program? And um, excellent stuff. Now you'll see that last week's program has to date attracted almost 5,000 people. Excellent stuff. If you take the promo, you take the program, you'll see the figures there. And we've attracted almost 5,000. Overall, we've attracted well over 100,000. So there you go. So we're going to end up with a program, folks. Thanks be to you. But you must spend the week sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. And, sharing, and uh, we will get you all sorted. Now then, shared, says Mick McFarlane. Ah, yes. Shared, says Shug McGinty. So... I'm wanting to discuss banning smoking outside in the fresh air because that's a public place. Also, and this is quite interesting, Donald Trump inaugurated as the 45th president of the United States of America, my fellow Americans. Now, I think it's amazing. Democracy, everybody um, who wanted him in has voted for him. He got the majority vote he's in and we've got women protesting why i say so we need to know about that sean hornby is watching think you do to you sean it's very intimidating crowds standing outside pubs kids walking past listening to all sorts says mandy graham so they are absolutely mandy there is no doubt about that now then have i got hold on bear with me have i got i am just checking we seem to have a tiny problem with the Skype. So let me see if I can get it sorted for you. I think I know what it is, but I'm looking for something here. So don't you guys go away. Let me see if I can find it and uh, we will get sorted. No problem at all. Thank you very much for all your Skype calls, of course. Very, very important and very much appreciated. And as the evening goes on, you're getting a bit of radio now, aren't you? You love that. You love the radio. And uh, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. One little switch can make all the difference. So let's hope that now, and I'm not sure, you should actually be able to uh, get a hold of Scotty on the Skype. If there is a problem, do not worry. I am here. McClure is here. And we will sort it out. We can do all these practical things. The smoking ban killed the pubs in the first place. Stopping it outside will kill it further, says Steve. Interesting point, Steve. I don't know if anybody agrees with you. James Forbes watching. Dinky do, James. Excellent stuff. Tracy Scott and 11 other people have just shared the video. Let them know we appreciate it. We do indeed. Not all women agree with them. Hello from Bay Minette, Alabama, USA says D. Nielsen. D, welcome, 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 I say. It's lovely to have you. Francis King, stay on the line. We are sorting you out as we speak. So there you are. Just a slight technical problem. As soon as I've got this sorted, we are laughing. Do not go anywhere. Stay there. Back in two seconds. Right. There we go. One, two. Now that should actually work. Uh, with a bit of, ah, there you are, you see. I'm not, I'm not just a pretty face, and I'm not just an athlete. So, if you were Skyping and couldn't get through Skype again, fantastic stuff. Here's Francis calling. One of our work with Francis. Hello, Francis. Hello. How are you getting on? 
<laughs> what have you done, Francis? You're right, you're right. Oh, I'm absolutely 100%, my dear fellow. What can I do uh, for you? It was, a bit, it was a bit of sushi there, eh? A wee bit sushi, yes. Do you like sushi yourself? Ah, uh, it's quite tasty. <laughs> very, very tasty. Now, what can I do for you? Uh, I was going to speak to you about something. Uh, you're talking about the smoking ban. The smoking ban, yes, we're thinking, Francis, smoking's banned in public places, so why not ban it outside? Because to me, outside is a public place. In fact, it's the most public place. Well, well obviously, the smoking's quite bad as well, but, uh, but, but what about in the, like, the cans of lager and that? Cans of lager outside? No, like, can, like how you've got a... Uh, like all, all the all the wee, uh, like messages on the back of the, the cigarette packets. Yes, yes, I know exactly what you mean. So you think put warnings on all the beer cans? And obviously sugary drinks as well. And do what? Sugary drinks. Yes, excellent. James. And, and, then, and then that way, and then that way, it might bring a bit more uh, awareness to what it can do to your teeth and what it can do to your lungs and all that kind of stuff. Francis, you're talking nothing but sense. That is excellent. Um, and I, I actually think, I actually think it, it, it would actually bring a lot more awareness to everything uh, because we obviously need to be healthy and we can't be like, like, like drinking it and smoking it away. And uh, I actually also think that uh, the government should actually maybe put that on because it, it, it would be a lot more uh, healthy for everybody else. You know? Francis. Especially, Especially we kiddies as well at school and that, you know. Excellent stuff. And thank you very much for that. And dinky do. Dinky do, you my man. Dinky do to you, my man. That is excellent stuff. Good stuff on the Skype there, folks. Now, um, it's always outside the doors of the pubs. You have to walk through it. It's a 50 quid fine if you get caught drinking in the street. Everybody's delighted the Skype is working. Sorry about that there, actually. We had to just throw a little switch. Sugar tax is coming in this year, says Brian J. Hemmings. Frank de Blatt and 14 others have just shared the video. Dinky do, keep sharing and sharing and sharing, guys. Craig Gordon's watching. Um, or dropping your clatty, siggy butts in the street, says Angie. Quite right, too. Uh, what time is the number two bus coming so I can throw myself in front of Francis? I'm off to get the Skype. I never had it, says James Forbes. No problem at all, James. You just download it and you can make free calls to Scotty McClure. Good point, Francis. Completely agree, says Richard Mackay. What a fabulous program this is, guys. It's interactive. Not only are we interactive on Skype, but of course, we're interactive right in front of us on Facebook. Wadge is on, Wadge Hashmi. My birthday on Tuesday, says Wadge. What age are you, Wadge? Dinky doo. Good evening, Scotty. Dinky do, says Craig Gordon. Dinky do to all of you. That is Scotty McClue's call sign, universally acknowledged throughout the globe. I am Mr. Dinky do, Scotty McClue. Capital M, small c, o, double t, i, e. That's the Scotty, the McClue, capital M, small c, capital C, l, u, e. Shared also, says Craig. I think they should have smoke gardens, says Tracy Scott. Now, Tracy, I don't know where you're from, but uh, on the one or two good days of the year that we get in the United Kingdom, I can't see people getting much pleasure from smoking. Mind you, that's maybe a good way. Hi, Scotty, how are you? Says Margaret Bonner. Absolutely fine, Margaret. Fantastic. <coughs> Pardon me. Scotty, my granny needs a new commode. Who do I apply to? Well, I would apply to your granny first and see what size of commode she's after. Uh, Penblit happens for Tuesday, Wadge. So, Penblit happens for Tuesday. Have I said it right? To Leanne Scott is teaching me Welsh. Gordon Bell, I think non-smokers should stand outside if they feel strongly about it. Gordon, don't be ridiculous, because if you're standing outside, you're going to get all the smoke wafting across. Laurie LD Dev has just shared the video along with 19 others. Excellent stuff. Can you all, every single one of you, tell everyone who has befriended you on Facebook that Scotty McClue is live right now on Facebook Live? Send them the link. Take the link off the top of your page 
and send them the link. Be creative, guys, because it's in the interests of all of us to build the biggest talk show in the world so that the people get a chance to speak. Mark Cruden's watching Dinky Do, saw a fine fellow. Pops of a beer garden, but it's full of Thomas the Tank Engines puffing away, says Angie. Well done, Scotty. Your Welsh is getting better. I thank you for that. Ah, nos da. Uh, ban the crisps from schools, Scotty, says Mark. Very fair point, Mark, yes. Uh, George, you can apply to occupational health to get a commode through your GP, says Brian J. So there you go. So that's answered your question there. Uh, you go through occupational health via your GP and Granny's commode should be on its way. So there you are. That's not an empty promise. Uh, more smoke off a kipper, says Michael McQuiggan. <laughs> no, come on, Michael. You're obviously a smoker. Michael Yule's watching. Hi, Scotty. We're enjoying all the YouTube replays. It's good to watch live this time, says Ben Lucas. Thank you very much, Ben. It's fantastic. It's a great privilege to present the program to all of you at 10 o'clock sharp, 2200 hours Greenwich Mean Time from the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, where Scotty McClure is the cultural and creative ambassador to the world. David Russell's watching. Scotty, did you know it takes three years for whiskey to mature before you can put uh, an E in whiskey? Very interesting, Ian. I didn't actually know that, and I do know a fair bit about whiskey. I don't drink a great deal of it, but I do know about it. Adam M. Fuller. Scotty, what is half of 99? Half of 99 will be 49 and a half. Adam, is that right? Is that half of 99? I would think so. 49 and a half. Um, David Russell and 23 others have just shared. Isn't drinking as harmful as smoking, says Steve Burroughs. Lynn Kay, who can afford to smoke these days? Well, you know, you're right. At seven pounds sterling for a packet in the UK. Am I not right? Is it not something like that? Let me know what you pay for your cigarettes. Adam M. Fuller's watching. Adam, have you managed to sort that YouTube thing out for me yet? Come on now. La la. You were the one telling me that, um, you know, sharing and sharing and sharing wasn't going to make any difference. Over 100,000 people have seen the program to date. I'm sharing the show again, mate, says Francis. I thank you, Francis. Everything's bad for us these days, says Daniel Joseph. I know what you mean, Daniel, and you get a bit like that, like I've gone on a high-fat diet. I once went on a whiskey diet and lost three days. Scotty, I've a stall in the SECC from the 22nd to 24th of January. Scotland's trade fair, says Michael Yule. I'll have new tartan and wood products. I hope you are in the same SECC, and I'll see you soon. Thanks, says Michael Yule. Michael Yule. Michael, good luck with your stall at the SECC with tartan and wood. Darren Kelly is watching, says Ron Stewart. Uh, no suit today, Scotty, says Wadge. No, Wadge, I'm going a bit casual today. I was out um, doing a bit of rambling, nature rambling. I know I'm doing a bit of rambling now, probably, but I was doing some nature rambling. And um, I'm just kind of in off the hill, if you get my meaning. Sharing's caring when Scotty's on, says Laurie L. D. Dev. More like eight quid, says Steve Burroughs. So I didn't realise, Steve. Absolutely, Jen, up. I did not realise that smoking eight pounds a packet of fags. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Angie says it's nine pounds sixty for 26. We did an experiment when we were out for milk. That's a week of gas heating. So, guys, if you stop smoking, you could afford to keep warm. Mick McFarlane says, I pay seven quid for a packet of cigarettes. You know, I have to confess, I fess up many, many years ago, about 20 years ago, I stopped smoking. But before that, I can go back to when cigarettes were um, three and sixpence for 20 if they were small ones, and four and sixpence, four and tenpence, and if you wanted the big bad boys... Five and tuppence, so that's uh, 27p. 
Hi, Scotty from Rochdale, says Francis Donnelly. I'm a Glaswegian in Rochdale. I heard you on Scott FM and Century Radio. Dinky do, Francis Donnelly. Lovely to hear from you. You can get them for five ninety nine, says Esther. Now, Esther, we don't want anything on here that might be, you know what I'm saying. Uh, some folks smoke. They smoke 20 a day. It's shocking, says Angie. Um, I'm too tight to smoke, says George Mullen. I don't see what it does for you. Now, it doesn't do a great deal for you, uh, apart from probably kill you. What was the book you mentioned by somebody about stopping smoking, the successful one, says Adam uh, Fuller. Yes, Adam, you're quite right. This was Alan Carr's How to Stop Smoking. Alan Carr was on a 100 cigarettes a day, and he was blacking out, and he wrote this book. I read the book, and that got me off the fags. I read it twice. And um, it's all to do with getting your head right, you see. So everyone can be, you know, uh, give up smoking. Everyone can do it. Everyone's a big person. Big Johnny and Laverne is watching in Northern Ireland, says Ron Stewart. Absolutely, Ron. Hello there to you, pair. Um, now then, who have we got here? You used to get single fags off the ice cream van for 25p 27 years ago. You're giving your age away the new, says Angie Thompson. Cigarettes are probably cheap to make, but they're very heavily taxed. They're horrible things, says Brian J. Hemmings. Out rambling today, that explains why you're all wrapped up. Yes, I had to dash back and do the promo. Now, guys, can you also share, 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 share the promo? So you'll see the promo that we did at um, quarter to eight, 7.45, if you can all share that as well. And uh, type into your Facebook Scotty McClue's on live. Send it round all your friends. Say, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue. Live on Facebook, live at 10 on a Sunday night. I love buns, says Gordon Main. Now, you'll see on Scotty McClue's Facebook when I was on national radio uh, for Buns Night, national talk radio. And also, you will see that uh, I was in Montserrat broadcasting Robert Burns on Montserrat. So go to YouTube, Scotty McClue, Dinky Doo Broadcaster. I will put the link up for you. And you can then pick out Scotty McClue in Montserrat. Just buy a single. I stopped six years ago, got tablets for the first month, never looked back. Best thing I ever did, says David Russell. Uh, Scotty, just do the ciggy run. It's cheap on the Costa del Boy, Spain. He's been walking the dog and he's freezing. I, I can't mind the dog's name, says Angie Thompson. The dog is called Clyde. So there you are, Angie. And my old dog was Lord Reith, the late Lord Reith, who now awaits at Rainbow Bridge for me. Um, Scotty, is there any chance of maybe getting a two-hour show or two shows a week? We can't get enough on McClure. Lol says francis king what we're thinking of doing francis is our rabbi bun special on wednesday but i shall post more about that on facebook live national talk radio the channels that get radio on my telly says angie thompson well there's very little talk radio in the united kingdom we haven't had the talk radio revolution and i feel the uk needs to talk I've always felt the uh, BBC, the British Bottom Cream, should be broadcasting Scotty McClue nationally on one of the national stations every night of the week. Or one of the big television stations, and we do an hour at night, especially if it's a company that maybe have access to their own phones. Mm. Right, Kenneth Patterson's watching. Dinky do to you, Kenneth Patterson. You're doing a great show. I remember your Scott FM days. Are you going back in the radio? Or do you prefer this great way of broadcasting, says Brian J. Hemmings. Do you know, Brian, I think we're just on the infancy of this way of broadcasting. I can see this show going out to billions. It's going out to billions now, but only a handful of people know about it. If you tell everybody about it, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClure Live on Facebook Live, Build, 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 share, share, share. If every single one of you does that right now, you'll find we build a very, very big audience very, very quickly. And in that case, there's not much need for radio or television because you can do it all on Facebook Live, live. 
with me, Scotty McClue. Happy birthday, James Kennedy, Sir John Stewart, Dinky you do? A clue about the new McClue's job? I cannot... Read my lips, George. My lips are sealed. All right, so there you go. I can. As soon as I can, I will spill big style. I, because we pay a fortune for a license, I don't know why they haven't got shoes on like this on the radio, says Angie. I don't know either, Angie. I don't think the BBC have any excuse for not having a show like Scotty McClue on Facebook Live. So there we are. The BBC equals the British bush. Oh, I can't go there. Thanks, Ron, mate, says James Kennedy. I've already shared Scotty boy. Five minutes, guys. We will all share, 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 share. Why don't the government invest in a more special area for people who wish to smoke? Enclosed, says Dave Hemsley. Well, it, you've got to work out, is it right to make smoking illegal, right? Or should people have the right to enjoy smoking if they do? If you get your new job, are you going to scrap the Sunday nights? Like good MPs promise, I would inform you. McClue does not make empty promises. I will inform you if we are going to change our Sunday night and perhaps go on to another channel. Uh, right, so there you go. Or put it on another channel as well in addition to. The way social media actually works, you can build your platform. You can be multi-platform. So we're on YouTube there. We're on Facebook Live. I'm looking at streaming live on YouTube as well. If you want to help, if you've got a few quid, if you're feeling flush and you want to uh, help sponsor the program or just send me a few quid, there's a PayPal at wwwscotty the world's top website. Over 10 million people have visited the website. I can't get the Skype going. It's broken down again. Surprise, surprise, Jarvis. Everything you touch technically, you turn to dust, La. You're the opposite of King Midas. Uh, you're better than the BBC, Scotty, says Hugh Miller. I don't know if he means the programme's better than the BBC, or I personally, Scotty McClue, am better than that. Uh, it's deplorable, this, says Jarvis. You're yeah, not getting your Skype working. Poor Jarvis is a wee bit fed up. Scotty McClue should be in River City. So there you go, says George Mullen. But what, who should I be in River City? Should I be a goodie, or should I be... A baddie, you tell me. Them battery smokers seem like they're in like a steam train when they're in their car smoking. Well, of course, if you've got children in the car or people under 18, it's illegal to be smoking in the car. I can't be bothered with any other talk show host. You're the only one I listen to now, Scotty, says Francis King. Francis, I thank you, sir. You are a gentleman. I will, when you just give page cause PayPal, if I gave a tenner, you would only get about eight quid. Not at all, Angie. No, no, I mean, absolutely. Uh, the bulk of it goes in there. So anything you feel you can, it's appreciated because we can put it towards buying um, maybe a, another camera um, or, uh, or advertising the show or what, what. Uh, John Gittins there. Good evening, Scotty, says John. Defo a goodie, says Gillian Scott. And uh, it's a baddie. A baddie is a Joe Fraser Walsh. Scotty McClue should be playing a baddie. Now, if we're playing a baddie, how would I play a baddie? Would I have the cap on or off? Would I have the glasses on and off? If I said, you better do something about that, otherwise there's going to be a very big problem. You know what I mean? Oh, don't. Made, made myself. Frightened the life out myself there. Um... Can you call Cruella and tell her to get... No, that's a political comment. Um, Steve Burrows says he's on Gem 106 from 10 to 1. Happy days. So if you can receive Gem 106, it's a radio station, uh, then you've got Steve Burrows on 10 to 1, a very, very fine presenter, excellent broadcaster. A baddie, lol, says Esther Hart. Did you like that, baddie? Menacingly skewed, says William Rose. So maybe not just quite so frightening there, William. Maybe a bit more gentle. Uh, maybe sort of right down to the um, to the sotto voce, the soft voice. I shall not be looking out for you from now on, chum. 
Oh, what about playing a policeman? Do you not think I'd make a very good Chief Inspector? Chief Inspector McClure. That's scary, lol, says Julianne Scott. I know, Julianne. I frightened myself. In River City, you could make out with Scarlett and saying I'd be looking for the number two bus. <laughs> is your Skype working, Scotty, says James. It is, James. Skype in. You should be on Crossroads, says Steve Webster. Crossroads is it doing well. Wadge, have you heard of Steve Allen? He's really good. Of course I have, Wadge. Absolutely. I have heard of so many broadcasters. Um, Hugh Miller, fit. Now, I don't know if he says fit, if he's wondering if my hat doesn't fit, or if he's saying what in Aberdonian the Doric, if he's in fit, fit like Scotty. Uh, I'll just have, can everybody see their gal potter isn't that beautiful? What a size of a mug. A touch of the cocoa in here tonight. Oh, that is absolutely lush. That is delish. Scotty, can you ask Big Ron Stewart? Um... No, I'm not asking him all that. Um, I tied to the crossroads, says George. Well, I'm a very good George. Can I Skype you again, Scotty, says Francis. Francis, I'd love you to Skype again, but if you can hold off just now, it'll let somebody else on. We've got somebody just about to Skype. You could star in Gavin and Stacey, says Julianne. Yes, I suppose I could be maybe a mad uncle or something like that, Julianne. Um, now... Maybe somebody that's not quite the full shilling. I would have the cap on like that, you see, and go down two ways. Right. Uh, now, uh, the new film has its premiere in Edinburgh tonight, Train Spotting. I know, and it looks fantastic. All the fresh air in the world. Uh, so there you are. Uh, was your phone in radio show banned, says David? No, David, don't be silly. Scotty McClure has never, ever been banned or ever said anything that um, that he shouldn't have said. I've done 36,000 hours of live broadcasting and I've had one complaint upheld in uh, in 34 years. Um, you could be called Dybach, lol, says Dybach. What was your... Um, uh, no problems, mate, says Francis. I was only thinking because the Skype was dead. And we love the calls. Absolutely, Francis. The Skype's not actually dead. It's just various people are wondering how to get through because I haven't been um, pushing the Skype. You can get in touch with us and interact with us, folks, on Skype if you uh, put in scotty.mcclue. Sensible people only. Uh, 250 comments so far, guys. Uh, you could be on Corey and be feelings pal in crime. Oh, Feeling. Oh, no, he's a baddie, isn't he? Feeling. Oh, my goodness. So, if I was in Corrie and I was Feeling's pal, I think that would be a, a glasses-off job, wouldn't it? And um, what's his first name? What's Feeling's first name? Pat. Pat Feeling. So, what it says? Aye, Pat. What's happening tonight, then? Are you and me going to get them tiles off that roof, Pat? Hey. Good and proper like before this trouble. You know what I'm saying, Pat? You take care now. Oh, scared myself again. That's what uh, I said. Hugh be Jack or Victor's long lost brother. Hi, Scotty McClure. Can you say drink like Father Jack from Father Ted? <laughs> Pat says Francis King. That's it. Pat, Pat Phelan. Yes, Pat Phelan. Uh, so there you go. You look after yourself now, okay? Lots of things can happen out there. Right, Welsh Pat. I could be Welsh Pat, you see, from the valleys. Um, but you couldn't have a bad Welsh person. Get your CV into BBC Radio, says John Guhar. They lost a few senior presenters recently. Dinky do, Scotty. Keep up the great show. Did Mr. Martin ever recover from the verbal thumping you gave him? XD, 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 says Adam M. Fuller, who's a Scotty McClue fan. Beam me up, Scotty, says Joy Kershaw. Uh, he plays a good baddie, though, says Francis King. Yes, he does. What type of cheese, says Gary Nisbet. I told him I had some very special cheese. Quite a strong cheese, actually, but very, very good. I didn't used to be able to take cheese at all. Um, it had a violent reaction, but in actual fact, now I can take as much as I wish. Uh, so very interesting. 
Uh, you were going a bit Pete Price there, Scotty, says Ben Lewis. Some dark glasses, Scotty, you could be the next Del Boy. Uh, excellent. Ben gone out of Treasure Island. I've been stranded here for so long. I think I've gone mad. Right. Um, also, you could be Benny out of Crossroads. He was sent for a spanner and came back 18 months later. I do, Mr. Yan, I do. Um, did Bella ever wash these smalls, Scotty? Lol, says Francis King. Now, what's the time? Oh, guys, time for a massive, massive share out. So, can we share, 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 share everything. Share the video. Share Scotty McClue. Start typing. I know you're not afraid of work, you guys. So just type in, everyone watching Scotty McClue on Facebook Live right now? Question mark. Get it right. Uh, are you going to the Bun Supper, a Bun Supper event, says Daniel Barr? No, Daniel, I think we'll have our own Facebook Live Bun Supper with Scotty McClue on Wednesday night. What do you think? Are you up for that and what time? Windsor Davis, says Adam N. Fuller. Yes, Windsor Davis. No, Sergeant Major. Yes, Sergeant Major. Shut up! Uh, nope, it's broken down again, says Jarvis. What has Jarvis? Your relationship? Your car? Your telephone? I don't know. The Sunday Post Agony Ant, says Steve Webster. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Um, dear Uncle Scotty, if you say beam me up, Scotty, to your Siri on your phone, it answers you. Salmon or sturgeon, says Gary Nisbet. Big fan of both, actually, to be quite honest. As you know, I'm apolitical, but uh, I do know Scotland could stand on its own quite happily. And um, culturally, it's uh, a good bit away from Westminster. So uh, but Alex Salmon's an outstanding politician and a very nice man. And of course, Nicholas Sturgeon is um, one of the few politicians that everyone trusts. Interesting. What do you think of Donald Trump being president of America? Do you think he'll be good for America? Brian, we're going to discuss this tonight on the program. And um, I think that uh, the thing with um, uh, Donald Trump, everybody has voted him in, so the democracy has voted him in. Not everybody, I mean, obviously some people voted for Hillary. But he's in, he is Mr. President, the 45th President of the United States of America. Now, it's quite interesting. We've had all these demonstrations and objections. How can you vote the man in and then have all these objections and marches? And it's the monstrous regiment of women who are marching, I see. Um, I'm giving this the heave ho. Off you go, says Jarvis. McClue for Prime Minister. Lol, says Jackie McCauley Brody. Jarvis just called Joan. Says George Mullen. Fiona Brown's watching Dinky Doo. Do you know the dog? Never trust a salmon followed by a sturgeon. Ah, he knows his fish. Uh, try restarting your computer. It will restart your programs from scratch, says Francis King. George says, Scotty, what don't you agree with that Trump says? Oh gosh, he says so many things. Do you see he sacked all the ambassadors this morning? And they've all got to get out. So it'll be very, very interesting. Um, if Donald Duck got shot, would they shout, Donald Duck! Um, when Obama was voted in, they rioted because he was black. Do you know, you're right, Angie, and it's very, very strange. I've never, ever, 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 ever understood racism. Because um, I was giving a little lecture during the week. There is only one race, the human race. There is no them and us. There's just us. It's as simple as that. And religion has never, ever, 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 ever caused a problem in the world. What causes the problem in the world is a lack of knowledge and understanding. So it's education, education, education everybody needs. Hector Nickel or Billy Connolly, says Gary. Oh, Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly's outstanding. Hector is very, very good as well, but he was of a certain age and stage. I can't use the phone. I don't know, says Jarvis. It doesn't matter, Jarvis. Don't get upset. I think the Obamas were great. I'm sad to see him go, says Brian Hemmings. I don't think you're alone, Brian. He was also a lovely, fun guy. And I must confess, I've got a soft spot for fun stuff. 
And do you know the dog, where can I send a Russian soldier a parcel? Depends what it is, Dino, and what front he is on. Well, I don't know, Jarvis says Francis. The bear is watching, says Ron. <laughs> Would you say Michelle Obama has been the best first lady ever, says George. Well, George, what you're forgetting, we've had, I don't know what George Washington's wife was like. I don't know what Woodrow Wilson's wife was like. Adrian, a, 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 Abraham, Adrian, Adrian Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's wife. But I mean, Eleanor Roosevelt was a great lady. Jackie Kennedy was a great first lady. Uh, Jackie Onassis uh, was, was a great first lady, as, as she was latterly. Scotty, I'm sharing loads and loads of pages. Your show's top notch, says James Forbes. James, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I have never had anything, apart from idiots, I have never, ever had anything but compliments from my shows, and I haven't understood why the national broadcaster, who we all pay for, doesn't put this program live on the telly. Uh, shared, says Jackie. Google it, says Andrew Thompson. Uh, Marvel stuff. I know one is born bad, Scotty. No one. Oh, sorry, Hugh, what are you giving me no one with a K? Eh, no. No one is born bad, Scotty. It's down to poor education. You're absolutely right, Hugh. You are 100% my boy. You are a star, says Gary Nisbet. Gary, I thank you. That is kind of you. Can someone give Jarvis a hand with his Amstrad PC, says George. Uh, I keep something on the beach, Scotty, says Dino the dog. So there we go. I was lying on the beach and the Coast Guard came down and said, could you move please? You're stopping the tide from getting in. Um, who would you say was Britain's best Prime Minister? Are you going from the first? Who was the first Prime Minister? Was it Robert Walpole? 1741. Or am I, uh, am I way off beam? I think it was Sir Robert Walpole. And then there were pictures. See, the Prime Minister is really just... <clears throat> the Prime Minister's proper title is the First Lord of the Treasury. That's what it says on the door of 10 Downing Street. First Lord of the Treasury. Number 11, Chancellor of the Exchequer. So, Prime Minister Downing Street was originally just an ordinary London house. But Prime Ministers who are a little bit uh, full of themselves, and that takes in one or two, I have to say, thought it needed done up a wee bit so they got in cornicing and what have you. I think Mrs Thatcher tidied the place up a bit as well, but it was just an ordinary house. It was grey brick, isn't it, Downing Street? I'm trying to remember. You can't just wander up and down Downing Street. When I was a boy, you could wander up and down Downing Street, and there's a lovely picture of me outside the Chancellor's residence with a one-pound note. Exactly, Scotty McClure. I liked Gordon Brown. He'd a lot more to give. No, I mean, we're wonderful Prime Ministers. Um, you know, I wouldn't have said that Gordon was particularly outstanding. Everybody should get Skyping Scotty McClure, Scotty Dot McClure. Near luck, Darren Kelly. Yes, it was Walpole, says Angie Thompson. Am I right with the date, Angie, 1741? McClure's of the old school. I was broadcasting when there were no computers, so you had to know your stuff. This has been a fast hour, Scotty. 15 to go, for goodness sake. Right. Scotty, you're on education, says Michael Paul McVeigh. I always remember a lad came in to buy some advertising off me on a radio station. And he said, I think we learned more from you, Scotty, than we learned at the school. So there you go. Brian G. Hemmings, do you mean to the bankers, says Joe Fraser Walls. You guys are discussing with each other here now. Um, so can we all share, 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 share. And type, folks, type to all your listeners. Is everyone watching Scotty McClue? And take the link off the top of the page there and pop it on so they can find us. Mainstream TV and radio has had its day, says Tony Kay. I agree with you, Tony. I mean, you look at this here. You look at the cost of setting up a television station. You've got premises, you've got studios, you've got cameras and equipment, transmission desks, you've got specialist staff, vision mixers, you've got journalists to pay, high quality journalists, you've got all your very expensive equipment, 
And you look at what I'm doing right here now. How different is this to what is on your telly? I would like to think it's even better than what's on your telly. Have you ever been in a physical fight, Scotty, says Mark John Conway. Never needed to be, Mark. One word from me and that's it. The game's over. Uh, so there you are. Jarvis is away to buy a new valve for his PC. Scotty, you need to be on here 12 hours a day, lol, says James Forbes. Jackie McCauley Brody, Scotty, you claimed your PPI yet? I don't think um, I'm really up for any PPI. Can we all shave, 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 shave? Says Steve Webster. I've had a wee, a wee shave tonight. A wee tidy up. A wee scrape of the pus. You need more time, Scotty. This hour goes too fast. Uh, another zero in your, uh, another uh, O in your word two there, Steve. You need more time, Scotty. This hour goes too T double O fast. I've shared already, but share to your friends and family. You all make Scotty's show the success it is. Francis, you're quite right. I am nothing and nobody without you, without you wonderful, wonderful people who are into quality chat and quality broadcasting. And that's what's marvellous about it. Tell your local newspapers. Uh, Shug McGinty, Gordon Brown, is there? he's not too much of a fan of Gordon Brown. I have to say, I was well, well, well unimpressed with Gordon Brown when he made that speech um, at the uh, referendum for independence for Scotland. Because if Labour had backed independence for Scotland, then A, Scotland would be independent, and B, Labour would probably be in power. So there you go. Andrew McVie, hello. Hello, Andrew. Dinky do to you, la. I've shared already, but I will share again. You're a legend, boy, says Jackie McCauley Brody. I'll stand outside the McClure Towers for a free live 10 a.m. till 2 p.m., because I've got to get the Wayne in and out of my school, says Angie. Where did you go for your walk earlier? Into the wilds of Perthshire. Yes, you're right, Scotty. What you're doing now is the future. There's no need for you to go back to mainstream television and radio. Well, I did my first television broadcast as a newscaster in 1984, guys. Ever done skydiving, says Wadge. No, but my father was a paratrooper, Wadge and was parrot into all areas of war. Can you believe it? This guy was 18. He was a very, very good radio operator and um, a great engineer, a wonderful musician. And um, he joined a Scottish regiment. He then went into the Paris. He was at Nijmegen. He did guard duty in India. He was in Japan when the bomb went off in Hiroshima. I've got the photos to prove it. And he was in Australia incredible if you love scottish shows show your love for the big man and share 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 scotty is it a lack of education says esther hart that we're all descendants from africa from millions of years ago and when people traveled further away from the sun they got paler and paler so i don't understand racism esther hart you wonderful wonderful lady you're absolutely spot on uh, absolutely spot on. We are, of course, all originally from the African Rift Valley. And it makes me laugh when somebody says, I'm British, I'm British. And you say, let's have a wee sample of your saliva in a plastic cup. We will analyse it, get your DNA. Sorry to tell you, but you're actually 80% Lithuanian. Away, Andrew. This is quality talk for the world. Ever been bungee jumping, says Andrew McVeigh, only if I've had a light refreshment. How do you stop a call about accidents I've never had? I got one the other day, she said, we believe you've been involved in an accident that wasn't your fault. So, you know, absolutely not. No question of that. But I hope you have a good night. Obviously a salesperson. Don't watch TV, but I could listen and watch you all night, every night, says Jackie McCauley Brody. You are very, very kind, Jackie. That is very much appreciated. And a couple of kisses. Uh, welcome to Grampian TV broadcasting from the Durris Transmitter, says Steve Webster. Imagine you remembering that going back to 1984. Yorkshire, says Andrew McVeigh. Yorkshire, yes. Does anybody remember ITV when it was um, 15 individual companies and we got all the different programs? Superb. Um, George Miller, tell them you did. Says Chai. 
Uh, no Jarvis today, says Watch. Uh, yes, he's been on Watch. Um, ah, that's the site you send your sample away. It's a fortune. Yeah, don't send any samples to anything that's a fortune. Somebody could check your DNA. Be great to have an all-night chat show, says David Russell. I thought it would go very well on something like BBC Radio 2 overnight. Uh, we're not, not all from the African Rift Valley. We, the Scots, are Israelites. Scotty, our national animal is the unicorn, and that's because we are scattered. Ephraim, Ephraim, let me see more, please. Uh, Ephraim, Robert, uh, wait, 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 this is too good. We are scattered, Ephraim. Robert Free Linwood is now in New Haven in the shadow of Yale Uni. How tremendous, Yale. Um, I remember somebody saying, I am from Yale. And Yale stands for youth. Yale stands for ahead looking. Yale stands for leadership. And Yale stands for enterprise. And this guy said, thank goodness you're not from Philadelphia. Uh, Lynn K says, Scotty, how do you stay so happy and positive? What is your secret? My secret, Lynn, is that I love people more than money. Now, it has been a problem for me because I can sometimes be very, very short of money. But I am never short of quality chat and quality people. And that's what the world is about. We pass this way but once. This is not the dress rehearsal. Are you single, Scotty? Says Jackie McCauley Brody. Lol. And um, take the high road. The TV show says Andrew McVie. George Mullen, I'll send you a PM for a great link. Uh, for a link, it's great stuff. It works wonders. Sorry, Scotty. Don't be sorry. This is what this program's about, guys. We are interactive all the time. Inter, 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 interactive. Inter, 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 interactive. 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 Oh, interactive. I thought Yale was a key. Lol, says Angie Thompson. Lol, George, says Joy Kershaw. Scotty Brigadoon is the poor man's outlander. You speak the truth, Scotty, says Wadge. I am known for it, Wadge. That might be another reason that some of the big companies think, oh, for goodness sake, Scotty McClure, too much truth. Let the people speak, I say. Great show tonight, says Mark A. Jones. Scotty the gentleman, lol, says Francis King. Can you give a big shout out to Big Ron Stewart, says Darren Kelly. Of course I can, Darren, it'll be a privilege. Scotty, if I get you in my taxi, I'll no charge you a boundary since your skin, says George. No problem at all, George. Put your takings on to PayPal. Uh, you can get no crack with money, but plenty of crack with people, says Michael McGuigan. You're absolutely right, Michael. That's what it's about. Uh, go yourself, Scotty, says David Patterson. Brian G. Hemmings, you got the accordion tonight, Scotty. Of course, we've always got the accordion, guys. Never a problem. Can we have a share, 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 share? Bonnie Prince, Scotty McClure, if you don't mind. Well, at 2.30 in the morning, Bonnie Prince Charlie knocked Flora McDonald's cottage door. And she got up and she says, who is it? He says, it's me, it's Charlie. I'm fleeing. She says, well, you'll get nothing made to drink here. Uh, it's called True Collar on Google Play. I'm not advertising. Touch more of the cocoa, folks. Oh, that is bliss. Absolutely delicious. Now, I'll just be with you in a second. I haven't gone away. Um, I've got the box here. There you go. If you wanted a wee tune, we'll maybe manage something. Uh, all right. You should do a ringtone with Interactive. Worth seven ninety nine. Will you come back to Mary Hill, says Martin. Martin, in the way back from Persia today, I passed along the Mary Hill Road. I saw Shakespeare Street and I got a wee, a wee flutter in the heart. Lovely stuff. Can we get a wee tune, Scotty? <laughs> Thank you. 
you go, folks. Reaching for you. John Toms is watching. Dinky do go. Scotty McClure says uh, James Fards. Brian G. Hemmings. You're very talented. Oh, well, I wouldn't quite go that far, Brian. Somebody said, do you actually play the accordion? I said, well, play is perhaps a bit strong. Uh, PML, love this memory, says John Toms. John Toms, a very, very fine broadcaster who happened to be with me one time when we were actually trying out the accordion. Incredible. Can you sing too, says James? Oh, we can always sing. Um, also, good show, Darren, says Ron Stewart. Sail me down the river, says Jarvis. I can play that, says Robbie Cooser. Of course you can. All the Yanks want the haggis. Poor things won't survive the journey to America. I wondered if America should actually come back to Britain, come home to Mama. So there you are. See what you think. Guys, are you getting a slightly bond image on the screen there? I'm just wondering if we've got too much light on. You should have been in the Glasgow to two at the SSE Hydra this weekend, says Andrew McVie. Love the old squeeze box, says Andrew Thompson. Busy B says, Brill, you're not just a pretty face, Scotty, says Francis King. Well, I'm not just an athlete, Francis, I'll tell you that. As a Scot in Rochdale, you're making me home, so you make me home. You made me homesick, Scotty. Oh, of him or him I wondered. Right. Uh, John Toms, totally fine, the image. Don't worry about that. That's fantastic, John Toms. JT, a fine, fine broadcaster. He's just come from a radio station. Uh, he's on Cam Glen Radio on a Sunday night. I was once in the Waverley for the Cow Games, and the band only knew one, says George. I bet they still stuck the money bag into your ribs, though, and got you to cough up a couple of bob. Bonds Night, Scotty, a live show with your accordion, says James. I think we will do a live show for Bonds Night on um, Wednesday night. You should perform at the Reed Hall in Forfar, says Andrew McVie. Shake your chamois, Scotty, says John Carroll. Jonathan Scott Donegan, accept my friend request, please, lol. I remember you from years ago. Now, a word to the wise. Can you all keep sharing and sharing this program all through the week? If you see it up there again, say, oh, I'm a clue again. Full of the blah, full of the blah. But share it, share it, share it. Very, very important. Because we are building the world's top talk show live on Facebook Live. Very important. Uh, get it round, you're on. Uh, world Tour, Scotty, the people's choice. Says Jackie McCauley, Brody, let the people speak. They pay the license fee, give them a massive show on the British bottom cream. Now, we've only got three minutes left, so what to the wise. If you've got a Twitter account, go on and get um, at Scotty McClue and follow me and retweet everything. Don't be slow about it. I know people say, oh, I'm not sending that. Send it round. Don't be silly, because this is for you. Um, I, it's just like New Year. It was brilliant. I couldn't think of a better person to bring in the New Year, says Angie Thompson. Um, do not share. Come to Paisley. The band on the Waverley knew five tunes. One was Happy Birthday, especially when it was no one's birthday. <laughs> not at all. Bands were superb. They had a dulcimer, I think, if I remember. And uh, also, uh, John Toms, brilliant show, he says, thank you, John Toms, very much appreciated. He shared a few things. Um, get on to um, Google+, Plus, McClure's on Google+, Plus, and just Google McClue and find out all the stuff and start really becoming an operator because this is a big, 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 big program. We are global. We're throughout the world. People are listening in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Russia, China, Japan, the Arctic, the Antarctic, right across America. The monstrous regiment of women are revolting, and um, they're not boring chat, says Andrew McVie. Right off you go, Andrew. If you've got boring chat, we don't want you on here. The chat's boring, says Andrew McVie. Off you go, Andrew. We need more of you, Scotty, an hour's too short. We're looking forward to Bond's night. Right, I'm going to have to push off now. Bond in the air. Can we give our poems to you on Wednesday night's Bond's program? Yes, you can, George. If you'd like to do a Bond's program, good show. Scotty says, Joe Fraser, Walls. Did you get banned from the radio years ago? I remember them as arguing, no, Jonathan Scott, Donegan. I have never, ever, ever been banned from the radio. I have never said anything I shouldn't have said. 
I've done 35,000 hours of live broadcasting nationally and internationally. And um, Andrew McVie, any more of your cheek and I will give you a lifetime ban. Think on it. Now, and we're not finishing on that note, of course. You've cheered me up tonight, says Francis. Thanks to all you guys as well. Thanks, Scotty, for the entertainment. Can I wait till next Sunday, mate? Big Ron uh, is flat to the mat with a party hat. Burns haggis the works. Scotty's too good for what's apparently radio these days. Radio these days is boring. Can you watch my band vids on my page, please, Scotty? They're called Swansea East. I was in a band called No Direction. Brilliant, Scotty. Good night. Good night, everybody. And Harry, Christo, Faru. Hi, Scotty. Bye, everyone. Thanks very, very much, folks, for being with us tonight. Thanks for watching. Lots and lots more of your messages. But from me, Scotty McClue, and from everyone on Facebook Live throughout the world, have a gorgeous, gorgeous week until we all meet again. Try and join us on Wednesday evening for the Bonds Night Special with me, Scotty McClure, and Facebook Live. We'll go at 10 o'clock and do one hour of Bonds. And until then, as I say, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of Wheaterzain. Au revoir and a cheerio. Love you lots, guys. This is Scotty McClue saying dinky-doo. Scotty McClue has left the building.